Hi, Jonathan. This is uh, our Fleetwood factory in Fleetwood, Pennsylvania. And behind me is the RCA uh, Ubangi horn system. That's, uh, that was uh, not the official term. It was the MI-9462. This was the premier RCA cinema system for large theaters after World War II. And it's an amazing um, piece of acoustical engineering and art, and to this day, sounds absolutely incredible. I, I always wanted to have um, this complete system. At the mill, I had in the beginning the cut down version of these huge horn reflex speakers. So it's, it's both a horn, um, you can see the two 15 inch drivers in the middle, and then these ports here form the reflex loading for bass to extend them down to mid 30s, which was all that bass was on a film soundtrack from the late 40s until about 1972 when you started to get low bass on film soundtracks with movies like Earthquake. So this system had the, the bass cabinet and then these radial horns, which RCA developed after World War II, um, they invented the radial horn essentially, which were cast aluminum, and uh, the uh, 9400 series compression driver, which we use on the AC1. So there's a lot of a lot of shared uh, history or overlap for us with this system, and I, I couldn't, I never found actually a pair of these when I could have used them because you can't even get these. I, I don't even have room for these at the mill and they wouldn't, I don't think, even fit into the mill. But here at the factory, um, we have room for them. And I was super lucky when a, a theater in Ohio contacted me and said, we've got these things, do you want them? And I said, hell yeah. We drove out with a truck and a trailer 10 hours and, and, and got these things. Uh, they were behind the screen and uh, built into a wall in the mezzanine. The thing with these speakers is that the cone drivers are incredibly special. I think it was the uh, MI-9449 woofer. Um, it was an extremely good sounding woofer that had very little power handling. And what, what would happen is that uh, this was built with tube amplifiers in the system in mind. And when solid state comes in, 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 in the 60s and 70s into theaters and they replace the tube amps with these really crappy, cheaper solid state amplifiers, they always blew up these woofers. And, and somehow these all are intact and perfect. And they, they, you can't run this speaker without these woofers and you can't recone these woofers because the cones don't exist. So finding all this completely correct with the original wires and intact was an incredible find for us. These speakers are, are a two-way system because uh, this was the base, obviously, big, two 15-inch woofers, and this was the mids and highs. They didn't go really high. They went to about 8K, 8,000 hertz. And that's because there wasn't anything on the film soundtrack above that. So not like modern soundtracks. So we actually added um, tweeter. Now, this is the center, center channel. We haven't added a tweeter to this yet. And in the, um, in the theater, the, they had a mezzanine. So we don't really need this horn at all. This was to get the people up top, you know, to make sure that they got sound too. Uh, you really only need this lower horn. And you'll see this white speckled paint. Uh, you might think that's some sort of uh, cool decorative paint job. No, no, this is, this is the overspray from the screen. In the old days, the screens had micro perforations and somebody would come with a paint gun and paint the screen so that they were really bright and reflective. And through the little holes, paint would, you know, make its way, these things were in behind the screen, and so they would get these, you know, white speckled paint all over them. And that's kind of a badge of authenticity because uh, if you ever see somebody selling cinema speakers from this period and they don't have 
this paint, it's bullshit. They're either reproductions or they've been repainted, but this is sort of your guarantee that this is the real deal. These are just really exceptionally rare. I've never seen a full set of this system anywhere for sale, um, not in the last 10 years or so. It's also interesting, this is the system that Alan Sides repurposed for his Ocean Way recording studios and which Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones used to do Thriller. And then Michael Jackson and Quincy Jones bought this system um, from Alan Sides for, um, I guess, for the Neverland or whatever uh, Michael Jackson studio and his, his home was called. However, it's not the same as this system. Uh, this system had very specific woofers that were designed by RCA for this enclosure. And I was very fortunate to meet A.J. May, who worked with John Volkman. These, these guys go back actually into the 1930s designing RCA's cinema sound systems. And A.J. was already, I mean, maybe 90 years old, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, explained to me how much work went into designing this system and creating the drivers that would properly load the horn and the reflex ports and you know the the amount of effort that went in they didn't have anything digital they didn't have computers they had to do everything by hand with manual measurements and calculations and they got it so right and you know, there's nothing made today that is even close in comparison to how, how this actually operates and sounds. And obviously it's incredibly efficient, you know, one or two watts and it's, that's it, game over. It's like well over 100 TB, one watt, one meter. And they're cool looking. <laughs>